back to the rundown. Let's focus now on a disturbing story out of Iran, whose regime today rejected what it called interference by Sweden after Stockholm called on it not to execute Iranian Swedish academic Ahmed Reza Jalali. He's a medical doctor and lecturer arrested in April 2016 while visiting Iran on suspicions. Uh, he was arrested on suspicions of spying on behalf of Israel. And a tape of his supposed confessions were aired on state television. Now, he reportedly called his wife from prison yesterday, informing her that he could be executed soon. Now, that prompted the Swedish foreign minister, Anne Lynn, to call her Iranian counterpart, Mohammad Javad Zarif, and ask for clemency, so far to no avail. And there was breaking news today about a similar case. Iran State TV announcing that detained British-Australian academic Kylie Moore Gilbert arrested two years ago in Tehran and sentenced for 10 years on espionage trials, has been released in exchange for the freeing of three Iranians held abroad. Well, earlier, I spoke about these cases with Iraj Mezdahi, an Iranian writer, human rights activist, and himself a former political prisoner who spoke with us from Stockholm, Sweden. Iraj Mezdahi, thank you for joining us on I-24 News. Uh, could you briefly just talk about your own personal experience as a political prisoner in Iran? Yes. Uh, hello. Uh, thank you for uh, having me in your program. I was 10 years in prison from 1981 to 1991, and I was sentenced to 10 years uh, prison. I was in Gohadesh, Evin, and Bezer Hesar, the notorious prisons in, in Tehran. I survived the cruel massacre in 1988, which in that massacre, during a couple of weeks, thousands of political prisoners were massacred by the fatwa of Khomeini. And then in 1991, I was released. In 1994, I escaped Iran through the mountain. I went to Turkey. I was arrested in Turkey with my wife and my 25 days son. We were in prison for a couple of months. Then we were released and we, we, we could, I mean, we came to Sweden and now I'm a Swedish citizen also. Right. I'm working now, on human rights issues. Uh, now, let's let's talk about Ahmad, uh, Ahmad Reza Dajalalali. Let's uh, talk about his case, because I don't think it's received perhaps enough publicity around the world. How is it being received in Sweden, what's happening to him, and what looks like it's moving towards uh, a possible execution? You know, he was uh, arrested when he went back uh, to Iran during, I mean, uh, a program which was working with the Karolinska Inst uh, uh, Hospital um, uh, in Stockholm. And he was in a mission. He was, uh, uh, they were collaborating with each other, Iranian government and also Karolinska uh, uh, Hospital here. And he went there. He was arrested. You know, he, he they wanted him to be, a, I mean, a, an agent for Iranian intelligence service that he didn't accept it. Now, uh, you know, he is, uh, I mean, sentenced to uh, death, and, he, uh, and we don't know what happened. Last, uh, yesterday, as, I, as far as I know, uh, the foreign minister, uh, Aunt Elaine, uh, she called uh, Zarif, and uh, she talked with her, and, you know, the, now the Iranian people also, and the Swedish government here in Sweden, they are worried about him and what will happen to him, you know, because maybe they are going to, uh, to execute him, and this is, I mean, uh, what we expect now. Right. Now, uh, uh, often in these cases, it sometimes seems Iran is looking for some kind of exchange uh, in return for freeing such prisoners. There was a case now just announced today, Kylie Moore Gilbert, an Australian British academic who has been freed in return for the freeing of, uh, of three Iranians. Uh, is there something, does Sweden feel that this is maybe some kind of negotiation? Does Sweden have any thing it could offer the Iranians in order to get him free. You know, this is this, uh, the policy of the Iranian regime during the last 40 years. They, they are doing that, you know, during the uh, 80s, from 1982 to 1992, uh, 104 per, uh, foreigners were kidnapped and they, uh, they were taken a hostage in Lebanon, you know, for exchanging with the, I mean, so-called prisoners in Israel or all, all over the world or, or, or so for, uh, I mean, uh, running uh, foreign, foreign policy 
active Iranian regime. Of course, last year we had with the Australian also two people were, uh, I mean, uh, released uh, after uh, exchange of prisoners. Uh, they were Australian and you know which American they did. And uh, also now I think maybe they are working on the case of Hamid Nouri. Uh, he was uh, arrested in, uh, he was arrested last year in Sweden and he is uh, accused of uh, uh, being, I mean, I mean, he he was uh, in a death uh, committee, and also he was responsible for killing uh, thousands of political prisoners during 1988. And of course, they are uh, uh, working on that case. And also, maybe they are working on the case of Assadullah Assadi. Now he's a terrorist. That uh, diplomat terrorist. He was arrested in uh, Germany. Uh, and two years ago, and you know, uh, some German and also and, and, and they are arrested and they are in prison. And also, they are uh, uh, Mrs. Fariba Adelha, uh, she's arrested, uh, she's a French. Uh, scientist, and you know, she had also close relation with Iranian regime, but she was arrested after being six months in Iran and working on the case with Iranian uh, uh, government or also Iranian religious uh, institution. But she was arrested because they want to put pressure on friends, you know. Well, let me uh, ask you, uh, Raj, do you want to see, does the international community uh, have to put more pressure on Iran, especially perhaps Europe, when it comes to these kind of this policy that Iran has, which really seems to be holding these people as hostages? Sure, I want that. You know, when some people come to your country and hostage some, uh, some uh, innocent people, what will you do? Do you uh, negotiate with them? No, nowhere, anywhere in the world. You cannot see that. Maybe during the 70s, they had something, uh, something like that. But you know, nowadays, nobody goes uh, to have a negotiation with the hostage takers. It's not true. They are take, you know, because you give them a wrong signal and they will do that. You know, Obama administration, they had some, uh, I mean, negotiation with Iranian regime. You know, they sent a lot of money to Iran. But what happened? Right. Again, some people were arrested. Some of them were working with Iranian regime. You know that Iranian, uh, now the Americans should right. pay for that. Uh, Mr. Namazi, you know, he was very close to Jawad right. Zarif. And he was loving for Iranian regime. When well, he went to Iran, you know, in a mission. Right, all right. Uh, uh, obviously, arrested. obviously, there is uh, really something besides dealing this on a case-by-case -case basis. It sounds like the international community has to come together and come up with some better policy on this. Hopefully, in the case of Mr. Dejalali, this will be resolved uh, before any sentence is carried out. Iraj Mezdahi, thank you for joining us on I-24 News.